Welcome to our uh, infrequent conversations with Adam and Gerard. Uh, we pop up on these every so often. We did Tiger King. We did something else. I don't exactly remember what because they're so infrequent. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to be talking, since it is the, the spirit of Halloween, we are going to be talking about The Simpsons and the Treehouse of Horror. So I've come up with my top 10 ish list of the ones I like the most. And I think, Dunphy, you're going to react to them. I don't know if you have your own list or not. No, lists are a lot of work, so I figured the best thing to do would just be to rip on yours. Fair enough, because, you know, when it comes to work, why do it? When it comes to why work? do it? And, and there is a lot. I'm just looking at your list right now. There is a lot to rip on, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And I just, sent you this, the, I just sent you just the list. I didn't send you the one with all the notes that I have with, like, little reasonings underneath each one. Oh, so maybe I'll actually get an idea as to why you had some of these just asinine rankings. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mostly it was to uh, avoid, you know, being the same as everyone else on the internet because a lot of people do this apparently. Yeah, it doesn't really make for good uh, content, is it? If you just have a bunch of people agreeing with each other. Right. I mean, lists are a lot of work, so why just rip off someone else's? Uh, hey, wait a minute. Or do them at all. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna start this off going ten to one. My number ten pick. It's a bit controversial, and it could be seen as sacrilege as it's not from the original, say, 10 or 12 uh, Halloween. No, you're not even close. It is the Grand Pumpkin Millhouse. And I'm going to screw this up, and I'm going to say the Great Pumpkin because that's what it's playing (laughs) off of, the Charlie Brown. It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown Halloween special. It is a solid entry for a later season one, although... 20 now almost seems like the middle of things. Yeah, I mean, 20 was, two, I looked it up, it was 2008 yeah. when this one came out. And that, I mean, that's, it's a pretty long time ago, but it's also still pretty past the peak of The Simpsons. 18 years into its run as a half hour sitcom. I'd also like the art style change, uh, having all the characters be, you know, spoofs of Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown and, and friends. I think. Santa's little helper with Snoopy, and you just kind of see him in the corners of the screen, kind of flying above the school. I thought those were nice little touches, which, for me, earns its place in my list of favorites. Just, just get in your top ten. Okay. Yeah. It, I wanted something different as number ten, so that's why it gets in. I think, though, you really start to pick up steam at your number nine choice. Yeah. So my number nine choice, sticking with my idea that it gets points for art style, is Homer Cubed. And that's from the classic Simpsons uh, Treehouse of Horror 6. And again, a lot of it comes down to what was at the time cutting edge animation with its uh, 3D-ness. But the storyline's also pretty funny because it's Homer trying to hide from Patty and Selma and And ending up behind the bookshelf. Hmm? When Homer's in the 3D world and uh, they're trying to figure out what it's like in there and he yells out, has anyone ever seen that movie Tron? It just goes, no, no, no. And they repeat, yes. finally get the wig. Yes, I mean, no, no. You know what my favorite part of that episode is? Or that... that um, Erotic Cakes? A Homer Cubed? Yeah. It's the end. So when the world collapses in on itself and Homer falls into the real world mm-hmm. and is just walking down the street and everyone's staring at him and then... He walks past the bakery. Yep, the old erotic cakes. Erotic cakes. And he yep. walks in there. <laughs> and they do the uh, the tilt shot up to the sky. One thing I've always liked about the Simpsons Halloween episodes, the Three Hours of Horrors, is the music. And the music that plays on the, or the credits in that episode is perhaps my favorite rendition of the Simpsons. All right, so let's move on to my number eight. Uh, I've seen this in plenty of people's lists, and it's been higher. It's been the 10 in some people's. It is the Clown Without Pity from Treehouse of Horror number three. The best lines that you can always use over and over again. Here's your problem. Someone set this thing to evil. (laughs) That's such a good line. Such a good line. Uh, One of my favorite hidden lines that kind of gets lost in that episode is, the dolls try to kill me, the toaster's been laughing at me. Or uh, Krusty's back, or the Krusty doll's back to being good. He's walking Santa's little helper, and he comes back and uh, says to Henry, I buried me a couple times. (laughs) Dogs like to bury old crap. That's a good one. 
and how could we forget the bit with the store owner? Oh, the back and forth. forth and yeah, that's bad. I see him, oh, Ben's and I. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Can I go now? I'm not gonna lie. That whole like little exchange kind of turned me off frozen yogurt as a kid. I also feel just for the sake of my shirt, I've seen it like I'm sort of cut off half here. So I just I want to point out it is yeah. a uh, reference. That is a great one because that's kind of how a lot of us are these days working it from is. home. It very truly is. And this was a shirt. This was our jersey from one of our TSN ball hockey tournaments. So we were the random tasks. Nice. I've got my name on the back, but just turning around would just be a whole ordeal. That's, that's, that's fair. I thought you guys would have been the drinking birds. I mean, that's good too. But I mean, he did almost destroy the town. I wonder how it tipped over. I didn't play one of the cats. I don't think the cat. Could have been the cat. I mean, that's. I don't see Santa's little helper doing it, but the cat. Snowball two is a bitch. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to number seven here, because you know segues are hard. We're just gonna skip. We're just gonna keep this thing motoring. It's the thing and I from Treehouse of Horror seven. Yeah, hey, seven from seven. I totally didn't plan that. Uh, it's Hugo, the evil twin, and fish heads. Mm-hmm, fish heads. Now this is a good one. I like this one. This is a pretty solid one. Um, perhaps what really puts it over the top is the Radio Shack line. We'll, uh, we'll check out every place a sick, twisted monster would go. I'll start with Radio Shack. Good. <laughs> I forgot about Radio Shack as a thing. Just in general. Not even just that line, but like Radio Shack. The source. Um. But I mean, I like this one from the idea that there's something hidden in the attic. It's just a classic Halloween trope uh, to finding out that it's Bart's evil twin or the big reveal at the end, or Bart's, Bart's twin. good twin. Uh, they were Siamese twins, if I remember correctly. Or, sorry, conjoined. I believe they prefer to be called conjoined twins. And of course, the Dr. Hibbert meme comes from that episode as well. Oh, yes, the uh, I bet you've never even seen your own face in the mirror. <laughs> So many things have played off that now, and I'm sure I'm going to loop a whole bunch of them over us talking right now about it. So, yeah, this is a, just a classic episode. So good. Yeah, and the twist at the end with Bart being the actual evil twin and switching places. I think at because, this point it's because been like, 24 I mean, years. I think we're past spoiler alert. I hope so. I hope It's The Simpsons. It's part of the zeitgeist. If you haven't seen these, ep- if you haven't seen these, why are you watching us? Go watch them. They're on you know, a particular streaming service owned by a mouse. Do you remember, though, like in the 2000s, because Fox had the Major League Baseball contract and Major League Baseball playoffs, Mm -hmm. a lot of times the Simpsons Halloween episode would not air until November. Yeah, I mean, that was even part of some of the opening bits for a lot of them. One of the best opening bits was when Kang and Kodos are watching baseball. Yeah. How boring it is. (laughs) And try to speed it up. Yeah. And uh, they eventually go too far and they destroy the fabric of the universe. I mean, baseball could do that. That is one of the good ones. But thankfully, the World Series is over already this year. Congrats to the LA Dodgers. Although, even if... I don't even know if there is one this year for the Simpsons. But I guess it would come out... either came out Sunday or it's coming out this Sunday, which would be November. No, we should probably know that. But I think... Wasn't there not a playoff game this Sunday. Sunday. So I'm thinking this Tuesday. maybe this year. I think they did have a day off, but I think it was Monday. Hmm. It's Halloween weekend. It's like people can have birthday weeks, weekends. Some people celebrate birthday months. It's okay. It can be November 1st and you, you can celebrate Halloween still. I'm fine with it. Out of the house. That'd be kind of nice. Sorry, I couldn't hear you over my own talking. I was just saying that it would be nice enough, or soon enough, hopefully, we can just celebrate birthdays outside of the house. Yeah, you know, you know, we got to do this now so we can celebrate later. Exactly. So, you know, do your part. Stay home if you can. Wear a mask yeah. when you're out. Wash your hands, folks. Can't stress that enough. Otherwise, we're going to run into some serious uh, pandemic issues, but at least we aren't dealing with zombies like they are in the next number, which is number six. Al Z for zombies. One of my favorite lines from this one is, you shot the zombie Flanders. He's a zombie. 
this was long before The Walking Dead and the whole zombie craze kind of came out. It seems so long ago. Yeah, man. It's just, this is one of those classic ones. Zombie Flanders, Zombie Shakespeare, Zombie George Washington. Solid. No, that, that one I have no debate or no argument with you on, uh, on number six. Solid, solid entry. I think it's about time for number five, which is Time and Punishment from <laughs> Treehouse of Horror 5. So here we go again. Five, yeah, yeah. five. Actually, Treehouse of Horror 5 is an absolute banger of an episode on a whole. Um, a couple others show up later on my list. This is a really good one, especially when you consider all the media in the world right now is all about multiverses and time travel from like Avengers Endgame, Spider-Verse. I mean, Community's best episode is all about different timelines. Oh, I wish, I wish I didn't kill that fish. <laughs> and the whole running theme of the three entries in that episode is great with Willie. Yes. Instantly getting killed. And just from this one, one of the best ones is when he pops up and is like, don't worry, it's not your universe. I'll help you get whack. And, and Maggie. Maggie. And it's James Earl Jones's voice. Yes. Um, this indeed is a disturbing universe. Such a, such a good one. Props to James Earl Jones for showing up in this one. He pops up later on in another one on my list. We'll get there. Um, but yeah. On the end when, uh, towards the end when everything looks good, uh, you know, fancy house, sister-in-law, sister-in-law's dead. Marge, you pass me a donut? Donut? What's a donut? How I wish Homer stayed in that universe. That looked like a lot of fun. It did look like a lot of fun. And that would be the one I would want to live in. On the universe. It's pretty close to his, except they all have the... Uh, the reptile tongue. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. I'm trying to think what else, if there's anything else in that episode that's, or that segment that's worth mentioning, or if we should just. Just make... the montage of when he keeps going back and. And just smashing stuff. Houses. Mm -hmm. There's some good ones. And some like, like little Easter eggs, obviously with the Flintstones house and some other ones. The McDonald's, the underwater. But yeah. Was that a SpongeBob reference? I don't think SpongeBob was out yet. Well, I would have predated SpongeBob by. A long Robert time, right? Years. At least. Yeah. At least five, six years. The SpongeBob was, what, 99? It uh, predates so. SpongeBob by a few years in that case still. Yeah. So let's just jump ahead to number four, which, as you can guess at this point, is from Treehouse of Horror number four, just because ah, numbers and me just like to go together like that. I don't know. It is The Devil and Homer Simpson. There's another one that has so many classic moments. As Homer has sells his soul for a donut and then thinks he outsmarts Devil Flanders, which, by the way, Playing the devil is Flanders. Genius. Don't worry, Mr. Simpson. I watched an episode of Matlock last night at the hotel bar. The sound was off, but I think I got the gist of it. Oh, you like donuts? Have all the donuts in the world! <laughs> it's just... Uh, he eats them all. And the jury of the damned. Yep. We get Lizzie Borden, Blackbeard, the starting lineup from the 76 Flyers. Yeah. Then you got Richard Nixon. Which is, I'm, I'm not dead. dead. In fact, I just wrote an article for Red Book. Hey, I did that favor for you. Sorry, Master. <laughs> you know, it's got a nice ending as well with Marge pulling out the whole wedding photo thing. And yeah, with uh, her possessing Homer's soul, in fact. Yep. And then Homer becoming a donut himself, or his head at least becomes a donut. <laughs> and then all the pops. He has to come out sometime. <laughs> uh, Those were the best ones. And for The Simpsons as a whole, the best episodes are when... A, you've got a good story and a good B story, and that they're just, there's so many jokes packed in. And that's, like I said, my knock on some of the newer ones, that they hammer home some of that art style stuff. They have some really good min like moments. They don't have it all together for one six-minute segment nowadays. They set the bar so high in the early seasons that it's tough to live up to it, but sometimes it's like, ugh. Exactly. It, it's tricky. Yeah, no, certainly. Um, so before we get into my top three here, I think we should go to the honorable mentions section because there is a lot of good segments that didn't make it. Um, Nightmare Cafeteria from Treehouse of Horror 5 doesn't make it, which looking back, I probably should have probably should swipe, swap it in for the Grand Pumpkin episode, but I, yeah, I think that would have been a solid option uh, with Seymour or Principal Skinner. 
fact, you might say there's a little ooter in all of us, and he just gets more and more literal. Yeah. You know, remember when I said I'd make something of him one day? Are you telling us that you grinded Jimbo up and I'm serving to him or serving him to us? Mm. Sloppy Jimbo's. Bro, from Trials of Horror 6, uh, Attack of the 50-Foot Eye Swords. Just don't look. Just don't look. That just has such a good message in general, especially today when, you know, everyone easily can get their opinion out in the world. A lot of people's opinion is just, you know, I'm going to say this to get attention. We could all take a lot. Well, I think, let me say it this in a better way. I think just don't look is great advice. If you just don't look, people who are after that kind of attention will stop doing it and they'll go away. The next one that is not able to mention is The Nightmare in Evergreen Terrace, uh, which is from the same episode as the uh, Just Don't Look. This is a good one, but just not, I don't know. Aside from lousy, smart weather. Uh, the best part of that episode, though, is at the end when Willie gets off the bus. Ah, who? Ah, come back. I left my gut on the seat. The next two are purely from like artistic standpoints. Oh, the places you will do, where Homer is the cat in the hat, or a version of the cat in the hat from a later, what is it, Treehouse of Horror 24. Um, just stylistically, it was kind of cool. Not cool enough to make the top 10, but good enough. Points for style. Yeah, and the same one with Coralisa, which is a playoff of Coraline. It takes that animation style when she goes into like the little doorway in her, in her bedroom into the other world that kind of takes a 3D animation style, a little more up to date than Homer Cubed, but it's not a solid episode per se. So again, honorable mention just based on artistic style. But and now we get to your top three. It is The Shinning. I think you mean Shining. Hey, do you want to get sued? When are you not supposed to read Willie's thoughts between four and five? Yes, that's, that's Willie's time. As, as I've already stated, I like the parodies that The Simpsons do for the Treehouse of Horror. And this one is very, very well done. No, and again, a lot of moments that are iconic now. For example, yeah. Urge to Kill, Rising. Oh, Rising. I'm feeling fine? Oh, okay. No beer, no TV, make Homer something, something. Go crazy? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> When he was going to the different doors, and first, here's Johnny, gets the wrong area. Then David Letterman, hi, David, I'm Grandpa. <laughs> Finally getting to the 60 minutes bit, but the beginning of the episode's great, too. <laughs> did you remember to lock the front door? Doe. When you locked the front door, do you remember to lock the back door? Doe, oh. doe. We forgot Grandpa at that gas station. <laughs> what, what about Grandpa? <laughs> Very good. I agree with that as a, your third spot. Yes. All right, number two, and this one's a little bit up for debate, uh, Citizen Kang. I think this is number one. I mean... I, I flip-flopped on this when I was making my list a little bit, um, and I'll get to my number one in a bit, but this one is... There's so much. It's actually timeless, despite being about an election that was, what, well, the 24 years ago? <laughs> um. It honestly feels more relevant today in 2020. It might have a little bit to do with the fact that it's an election year, but it's just such a such a timeless one. It also features two of the classic Treehouse of Horror characters in Kudos and Kang. Um, but the two-party system, you have to vote for one of us. And perhaps the best line of a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Abortions for all. Boo, abortions for some. Boo. Sorry, I think I screwed that up. Abortions for all. Abortions for none. Very well. Abortions for some. Miniature American flags for others. Yay! <laughs> or, or um, what's, what is it? We must not go forwards, but upwards. Not upwards, but forwards. But always twirling. Twirling. Whirling towards freedom. But then when they abduct them. What's Clinton's line? Oh, is it noon already? <laughs> I don't want to serve out the rest of the, finish my term in a tube. 
Uh, it's, it's, that's such a good one. Um, don't blame me. I voted Kodos. It could have been number one. It's not. Should have been number one, but you know. Probably should have been number close. one, according to you. But I'm um, going with my number one pick, The Raven. I don't hate this episode. I think it's great. I just don't think it's number one. Well, that's fine. I've seen this. I've seen this all over on people's lists, but I, I just like this one. Um, it's one that sticks with me. I just again, this is my top ten, so this is one of my favorites. I like the idea that it can just literally take something like Edgar Allan Poe classic literature and just turn it into a Halloween special. Well, and you've got the James Earl James Jones. Earl Jones, the voice of you know. really cool. But um, I do love the end of that bit when they're back in the treehouse and Bart's like, that was scary all. And Lisa's like, well, it was written in the 1800s. Maybe people were easier to scare back. Then. And Homer's just there like just shaking outside the treehouse. That's a that's a really good one. Um, yeah. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Yeah. It, uh, it's hard to make a top ten, certainly. It is, it is. So, you yeah, know. You screw that up, so. Hey, listen. If you agree with Dunphy or you agree with me, you can turn this into another whole Celine Dion situation. A uh, little call back no, no, to No, no, it wasn't Celine Dion that you got everyone into a hop about. Yeah, because then I lose that one and have to sing well, my way back in. Lady Davis eyes. No, but I also lost on. I had to sing my way back oh, in because it's Celine Dion. Dion. Oh no, sorry. Yes, I, so, you had to sing back in. Do you, yes. Do you watch your own shows? Dude, I've done seven. <laughs> Anyways, um, guys, down in the comments section, let us know your uh, favorite Treehouse of Horror moments. Tell me why I'm an idiot. Tell Dunphy why he's an idiot. Uh, and yeah, and hey. If you like these little infrequent conversations with us, uh, let us know. And we'll come back and maybe do some Christmas stuff. Countdown to Christmas, maybe. I don't know if that's going to be infrequent enough, though. I mean, Christmas is coming up. It's only two months away. Yeah, but if we don't do one for another two months, that's still pretty. Is that still infrequent enough? Uh, yeah, considering we haven't done one of these since, what, June? But you see, that's where I'm a little worried because that was a lot longer ago. Well, maybe these infrequent conversations become more frequent as we become more popular with people. Oh, well, then we we'll have to change the name. Well, this becomes frequent conversations with Gerard and Dunphy. Okay. Right now, they're infrequent conversations. Anyways, if you want us to do some Christmas stuff, let us know. Uh, I'm thinking right now for the one, if we do one, we break down a Lifetime or Women's Network or Hallmark Christmas movie or even... Maybe we even dive into the uh, Connected Universe Prince on Netflix. I, uh, I'm on board. All right. Till then. See y'all.